How you doing, fam bam? This is Chris Musa here with another video on Corsair keyboards. And you probably need to know or want to know exactly how you can program those macro keys that you have on your keyboard. Maybe you want to change out the beautiful RGBs that you have now. Maybe you want to change out some commands. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do all of that in this very video. But of course, if you find this content very useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy content just like this, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more if you love talking about PC and tech stuff. But let's dig right into it. Just bought this brand new Corsair keyboard and you just want to get it to its full maximum capabilities. You got profiles that you can dig into. You have different settings to where you can even have these macro keys on even if IQ is not available. So if you program a certain key on this very keyboard, when you plug it into a different PC, you will be able to use the very same macro keys. That's a pretty awesome feature, right? Let me go a lot more in depth here. Of course, you're gonna need a Corsair keyboard to do this, and you will also have to download IQ. I will show you exactly how you can proceed in each and every step. If you're interested in the very same keyboard that I am using, it is a Corsair K100. It is down in the description box down below. You can go check it out if you like. Without further ado, let's dig right into it. First off, I gotta congratulate you for getting a Corsair keyboard. It's probably one of the best purchases that you can honestly make. I'm gonna show you exactly what you can do in order to get started with your Corsair keyboard. At first, of course, you, you notice that it doesn't come with any extra features or hardware because it doesn't. You have to actually download something called Corsair IQ. I will make sure to have IQ down in the description box down below. But specifically on this very video, I want to show you how to work with their newer version, which is IQ4. So let's get their software here and you're gonna to go to download software. Now you're gonna notice that they have two different versions. They got version 3.38.61, and they also do have another version, version 4.10. This is the current version that I will have downloaded and show you guys how to work with. You just hit this download button. You do not have to put all your information if you choose not to. You can just click skip and download to the step. You'll notice IQ downloading, and once it is finished downloading, all you have to do is simply install it into your system. Okay, so IQ is downloaded. You just want to hit run. Click yes. Because I already have it installed, it's going to ask me to uninstall or remove it or repair the application. Of course, naturally, you just are going to proceed with the next step of installing it into your program folder. And then from there on, you should have IQ installed on your PC. Um, I have three different options here. I got my ASUS motherboard, which I will show in another video on how to work on RGBs on IQ4. Um, I got, I also have the K100 RGB keyboard and I have my lighting node pro. So we're going to work on the K100 RGB keyboard because I want to show you exactly how you can program your, uh, macros and your hardware. And it's really not all too difficult. So let's go straight into it. And as you can see, you have here on your left hand side, you'll notice a lot of different options. I will give you a quick flash run on exactly what each of these options are meant for. First, you got key assignments. Key assignments are for what you want your macro keys or a specific key to do. Uh, hardware key assignments are what you want your keyboard to know even if IQ is not open. If you wanna just use your keyboard somewhere else, it will be programmed directly into the memory of your keyboard. You have your lighting effects, of course. Lighting effects are for your colors, your RGB colors to what, whichever or however you would like. And then you have your hardware lighting, which is something that you want to carry over with you if no matter what PC you are on or whichever item that you are using your keyboard to, it will constantly remain with the same RGB lighting. Then you got performance. Performance is different uh, options that you have here. Like uh, for your lock key, you have it when your wind lock is on, you can actually disable certain functions of it, such as if my lock key is currently on, which is the default right now, which is uh, if you hit 
disable win key, then it will only disable this Windows key. Um, the next one is control wheel. Not all uh, keyboards have this, but if your keyboard does have this, you can actually program exactly what your wheel, what you want it to do. Uh, specifically for me, because I like to use Premiere Pro a lot, I use mines for playhead scrubbing, which is really, uh, really a useful feature for me. Last but not least is device settings, which is you can check for updates. You click that, mine's is up to date. You can change the polling right here. You can change the brightness. You can change out your layout of your keyboard. Um, you can even set yours to set uh, for tutorials. And here is where you can set up all your memory. Up here on the top left is where you can also add different profiles. So we're gonna add a new profile and we'll make it say, I don't know, purple. So we're gonna make it purple. We'll call this desktop because we want to teach it some functions for the desktop. So we create that and there you go. Now we can get started. So for key assignments, let's go straight into here. Uh, and now for these G keys here, say you want your G1 key to be a copy button. So all you have to do is simply go into your into G1. So as you can see the different assignment types, you have keystroke, language keys, mouse, and keyboard, which is a very simple way to add, um, like say if you wanna teach G1, for some reason you wanna teach it C, like if you need it for gaming or any type of need, or maybe you're using it for some type of program, all you have to do is press C, or you can even add control C, which is a very simple function, which you can teach it. Now, this button should be able to copy. Now say in G2, you want to do, uh, you want to teach it a macro, and a macro is also it's very simple to teach. All you have to do is click macro, and you just hit the record button. So let's say we want to teach that paste. So we click record, control V for paste, stop. And now that key will do exactly that. So the difference between keystroke and macro is that you can teach it more functions than just uh, just paste. You can also teach it paste and maybe you wanna change it italic, you can also do that. Or you can also add a different function after you paste. But it's generally up to you. As you can see, uh, it, you can add different delays, keyboard events, you can even add a mouse click to it. Um, and you can even do advanced functions on top of it. Another very useful feature is you can also teach it mouse commands. So if you wanted to lower your DPI somewhat, that's the general idea of how you can do key assignments and hardware key assignments is practically the same thing, except that you're teaching it uh, your keyboard that if you can teach your keyboard, even if it is without IQ, let's go into hardware lighting. You want your RGBs to show no matter what PC you plug it in. So all you have to do is click this add button here. And from here, it's very simple to work with. All you have to do is you can do all uh, lighting zones if you choose or just the G keys. So let's say we just want the G keys to show uh, a rainbow. And now the G keys will just show a, a rainbow. Now let's add a different function and say we want the keys W A S D F. Uh, say like you use that for gaming color shift key but we want it just specifically colors that we can see like yellow and green. There we go. Now we're all set for that. And now let's add another function here. And now let's say we want the rest of the keyboard just to have a color wave and we can do that. So the rest of the keys will show a color wave and we can show a much more uh, slower pace here if we so choose to and it only starts with the pro and you can start this with the profile but that's simple so now if you take this keyboard anywhere to say it, you hook it up to your boys pc and these rgbs will remain the same so it's a really nice feature especially if you want it the if you want something that you're very specific on. Okay, so after we're finished uh, hardware lighting, you don't want to, you might not see it save immediately because as if you notice you go straight to performance, you'll notice your lighting disappear and that's perfectly normal. It's because it is hardware lighting and as soon as you exit out of IQ, 
it will perform as normal. All right, so next we go to performance here and it's pretty simple. You, you have your lock key, you can change this to say blue. You want your lock key to blue, you can. And when it's off, let's say you want it red for some reason. And there you go. Now, when you press that lock key, it should turn red when it's on. It should be red when it's off and blue when it's on. So it turns into a multifunction key. So now it's off. Now let's turn it on. Also, you have other features such as you can disable the wing key. You could also disable shift tab if you choose to. You can disable exiting the game if you like or exiting a program. Or you can disable alt tab by simply just turning that tab on. And if you get to the control wheel here, it's up to you what you want to set your control wheel to. But say if you want to teach your control wheel something different, just like how I had it in my Premiere, all you have to do is you have to teach it a key assignment first. I would have to go into hardware key assignments, go here, and I would put an arrow key on it. For back, that's left. And then I would add another arrow key, right. So now we have the hardware key Assignment saved, so we can save these to the library. Simply just save this keystroke one and keystroke two. So you go to the control wheel here and you click add. We just go here. And as you see, both of the keystrokes that we had, we can simply put keystroke one, keystroke two. And then you can even rename it and call this playback, just say. And that is how you simply customize the control wheel. If you don't change, if you don't add a hardware key assignment to the library, then you will be unable to uh, assign a very specific key to your control wheel. So, and you can also even change the color of it. We'll make that say, we'll make it blue. So after you're all finished everything, you can change the polling rate and everything here into the device settings. Uh, 2000, 4000 hertz, and even up to 8000 hertz, but that'll require more power out of your PC if you choose that. And then you can save your uh, your setting, which is what I have as desktop. You click menu here and you click overwrite and click OK. So you're probably wondering why your RGBs are still not showing, even though they're hardware assigned. And the very reason for that is because you can actually exit out of out of iq now once you do it will automatically go to the hardware setting for your keyboard so let's exit out and you'll notice your rgbs will be showing on your keyboard make sure you have your profile set to your hardware uh slot profile on your keyboard and you'll notice your rgbs light up to your hardware assigned rgbs that's the only difference between hardware and lighting effects and also hardware key assignments to regular key assignments. That is everything on how you can program your Corsair keyboard. It's really not all too bad. If you found this content very useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy content just like this, make sure to go down and hit the subscribe button for more to join the big, wonderful fan bam. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And also, if you want to Follow my Twitter handle right here. It is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. And fam, fam guys, how are you liking your Corsair keyboard? Or if you don't have one yet, why do you want to get a Corsair keyboard? Is it something that is appealing to you for some reason? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.